Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Noon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I'm joined by my fantastic uh, co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. Um, but we are most blessed today to be joined by our guest, uh, Tiago Higgs, uh, a CG artist, computer-generated imagery, that stands for, uh, and Bitcoiner living in the UK currently. Um, so first off, Tiago, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, girls are asleep and this is the uh, night shift. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm happy to happy to hear it. Um, but yeah, I guess the first question for you, obviously as a Bitcoiner, um, well, I suppose art artistic and imagery side of things and Bitcoin can join together, but they're not like obvious links. So I guess what was your life like um, before Bitcoin? And then how and when did you discover Bitcoin? That should always kick us off. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's going to throw me on a rant for uh, a couple of minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, so like um, classic middle class in Portugal, um, probably the worst student or top five worst students of pretty much every school I've been. And then comes a little turning point where I'm around 16. Uh, we are living in a big farm with two houses in it, big houses. And uh, we, get, we get rug pulled and my mom goes to jail for five years. So my mom goes to jail for five years with that rug pull. And my father is nowhere to be seen. So it's just me and my grandparents at that time. Uh, little control over a 16 year old at that point. I'm literally uh more free than we are today <laughs> by today's standards <laughs> i literally could do whatever so yeah uh from from sleeping in benches at night uh to hanging out with people that uh, today are in jail and things like this i somehow managed to come out on the other side of that and um uh and then i moved to the uk eventually when my mom came out of prison. So when I moved to the UK, my grandfather gets cancer and he's a very curious type of guy or was a very curious type of guy. So at that point, he starts going on this because he's limited on life at this time. People tell him he has like two years, something like this. He goes on this uh, frantic chase for everything that he wants to learn. And I go to Portugal on holidays and I'm in the car with him and he asks me, well, he's looking frail and everything else because like chemotherapy and all this nonsense. And he tells me uh, if I heard about Bitcoin. <laughs> so he, in, you know, in the chase for answers to stuff at the age of 70 something during his cancer uh, thing, found Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm not, as, I'm not exactly uh, sure, but as far as I'm concerned, I've tracked back the time when that was, I think Bitcoin was around $800. And obviously <laughs> I was too, well, I wasn't too young, but I was, I was still in that mindset that everything is bullshit. Uh, if I, uh, you know, ego was all over the place. So he tells me this thing in the car and I tell him, no, that's bullshit. That's just internet bullshit. You know, like, Classic. You've seen it. I've seen it. Uh, it <laughs> well, I've said it. So I told him like, yeah, that's internet bullshit. I, I don't know. Like until you can, I think I threw, I actually think I threw him the classic. Well, if you can't buy anything, it's nothing. <laughs> I think now looking back, it's like, what the fuck? I can't believe I said that one. Uh, but yeah, it's like, <laughs> I think I, I, I gave him that one. And then uh, things went on. I would, Came back to London, he eventually passed. And a friend of mine that I know for the longest, it's the longest person I know besides that's not a family member. We met each other when we were one year old and we've been together uh, as friends since. He introduced me to Bitcoin. Hey, are you interested? You know, at that time I was a bit more um, receptive and uh, I just took it all in. He just gave me the lead. And the rabbit hole started unfolding. The fucking branching starts to go everywhere. You start buying all the books, watching all the podcasts. That was at, um, uh, Bitcoin was at the 3K bottom when that happened. 
So actually, I missed. I missed get. I you know I didn't get wrecked in 2017, so that's not too bad. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and I started on the bottom. Um, but yeah, at that point, I took it all in. I started buying the books. I started reading everything. I got you know involved, and uh, I got involved in. Well, I got involved in Twitter actively just later on. Um, I was deep in the Instagram game. I wasn't too worried, you know, like how it ramps up, the rabbit hole ramps up as you're like getting into it. And it kind of, it's exponential. At some point you, you figure you don't have enough time to learn everything in the period of time that you have. And just that you wake up earlier and you go to bed later and you just keep on reading. And um, yeah, I guess nowadays uh, it's, um, yeah, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, yeah. I guess it's the usual speech. Uh, Bitcoin did change a lot, like uh, of aspects around my life uh, today. Yeah, it's interesting, man. Because like you, um, you said you got into some like yeah rough, rough situations, rough stuff, but then you obviously made it through to the other side, lucky enough to do so, kind of thing. Like, what what do you think it was that made that made it that way? Right, like you're you're different to others. I'm sure other people you knew probably didn't make it through, and you know I, I've got friends who got into some tough stuff when you were kids and you know for whatever reasons they don't like uh do you reckon it was like your family influence maybe or, or what was it do you think that or maybe just like a natural like uh, passion for something in you what, what was it do you think that like made you get through to the other side yeah that's a fun one because it's um uh <laughs> this is like this is when it gets a bit funny in terms of like personal uh stats i'd say or people or most people find this a bit weird but even though i was sleeping on the streets once in a while or a security guard on a security on some club would hear me tell my friends that I didn't have money to go home and he would literally hand me over some money so I could go home because I, I would go out at night late and I couldn't go back home because I didn't have any money and things like this um, it was five years my mom was in jail I never got, I, I hung out with all kinds of people. Again, people that are in jail today, people that killed other people, things like this. Also great people that I, I still hang with today. But I never got to drink alcohol. I never did any single drug. Arguably, I uh, was a little, uh, I don't know if the word is correct, like a vandal in a way I, I destroyed some personal property and things like this but it's funny how i uh the idea that i'm always on the contrary i always if people try to throw me in one direction real hard i immediately go the other one and that could go very bright or very wrong <laughs> it turns out that being surrounded by people that were always you know doing drugs getting drunk this and that the more they were pushing the more i roamed in the opposite direction and that's been like, a, a, I'm 37 now. I still have not drank alcohol. I still have not smoked anything. I still did not do, well, I, this year I got into uh, psilocybin and stuff like this. So now at 37, I, I wouldn't even consider those things like, I mean, that shit grows on the floor. It's like, <laughs> it's like, leave me alone with that stuff. So it's like, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been always a push on the, uh, to the opposite direction. And the school is the same thing. The, 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 the school has a sense of enforcement where like I'm being told that I need to be there and I need to do the best there if I want to be successful. Even at that point, like um, I've, I've, I, well, that's one of the reasons I became one of the worst students in every school I was like, because I, I felt resistance to that. I don't want to do this now. I don't want, I'm just interested in creative stuff. I don't want to learn maths. I don't want to learn any of this nonsense. Um, so yeah, it's like that even today, even uh, as soon as Circus 19 kicked in and people were trying to force me to stay at home, force me to like put me, I felt like put, put against the corner. So obviously <laughs> my natural thing is, well, this always worked for me to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to do exactly the same. <laughs> to date so obviously <laughs> i'm fully unvaccinated and all those things uh so it's like 
it's always it's been always like this it, it came that it, it came that I, I trust it I trust it these days and I can see uh, my daughter doing exactly the same things now she's she has this type of resistance and I, I keep trying to talk to my wife like we, we don't want to take that away the the little bit ungovernable right it's got to remain you cannot you cannot take that away <laughs> important don't take away the passion i guess right like and, and i, and I yeah. suppose it's probably i think it was one of the things so i've noticed a little bit of that in myself a little bit like not crazy amounts but a little bit and that's like one of those things that uh attracted me to bitcoin a little bit um when i first started learning about it as well I was like hey okay this is like the alternative to a system that i think is corrupt and screwed up and to a monetary system that i think is bound to fail and as banks can do things that if you or I did it would be, you know, we'd be imprisoned for life, <laughs> you know, kind of stuff. And um, so that kind of stuff really well, didn't gel with me at all. And so it kind of pushed me in that, that direction. Um, so I can see how you, um, if you have that, that kind of personality, I can see why you would move into being interested in Bitcoin, why it would kind of catch on to you. And like, you'd be like, oh, this is interesting, you know, go down this. Because not many people in Bitcoin either are really pushing anyone or forcing anyone to do anything. It's more kind of like, a, here's the information, uh, screw you if, you don't, if you're not interested, basically. Um, it feels like a lot of the time, right? Um, <laughs> so, which I think does well for that kind of train of thought. I guess like um, something else is interesting because obviously, it's good to get like an understanding of, of who you are and, and kind of the, the journey you've had. Like, how did you, well, first off, I suppose it'd be good if you could tell people, okay, like as a com, as like someone who does computer generated imagery and, and, and animation and, and things like that, like, what do you, what, what is that? What do you do? Right. Like on like a day-to-day -day basis um, as a, as a creator, yeah. a creative mind. And then like, how, how, when did, when did that happen? Like, how did you do that? Where does that fit into the story? Yeah, like I guess I guess I'm one of those cases where I uh, it was by uh, observation. My father was very creative, even though I only met him like around when I was ten. Uh, it was just right on time uh, to figure out that I was just as creative and as spontaneous as he is. He he was also a 3D guy back then. He was exp it was at the beginning of 3D software and stuff like this, and he was exploring with it. He was deep into uh, uh, photography as well, which I am still today. <clears throat> uh, my mom was a TV producer. So <laughs> like I was surrounded by this, uh, by this environment. So my mom would take me to the TV station where she was working at the moment in Portugal. And I would get to go there. So I I'm not even, uh, I'm around 16 at the time and I'm changing tapes at the TV station and doing graphics in some weird computers that like that, that stuff probably doesn't exist anymore today. So yeah, I was really, I, I was really just wrapped in that environment for many years. My, my mom worked as a TV producer for many years after that. Uh, and I got to follow it close and it, it just got a, yeah. Then I started doing web design. Uh, I studied mostly web design and then a little bit of print. And then it evolved into 2D animation, 2D graphics. And then it eventually 2D graphics was not enough anymore. I needed more 3D. I needed 3D, essentially. I needed to be able to spin stuff. <laughs> so then comes 3D. Uh, so it, and then today, is, it's now been 12 years since uh, the whole thing started. But um, uh, yeah, that's. It started in Portugal, but I only really worked in Portugal for three months. That's the reality of it. I, I, I worked in, I got out of school when I managed to get out of school. <laughs> Finally, I worked for three months. I came to London for a concert, uh, Bring Me the Horizon back then when I was still listening to that stuff. <laughs> I, I came back and I, I got back to Portugal and I was like, fuck this, I'm going, see ya. I literally went home. I didn't even tell my boss I was leaving. I was like, see ya, I'm going to London. One month later, I moved with 700 pounds in my pocket. And I got to make it happen with 700 pounds. <laughs> so, so between jumping Impressive. from, yeah, jumping in London is like, you can't pay you like two drinks. Doesn't get you far. <laughs> yeah, so say, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe gets you half a night out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly so like i i uh yeah i i'm thankful to all my friends that i was able to hide in their bedroom for 24 hours while uh 
so landlords wouldn't be able to see me and things like this. Uh, yeah, it wasn't easy, but then, you know, I, I found my first job. And from there, I mean, it's just, you, you, you know, you, you get hungry and, um, but I wasn't very, I wasn't very solid with finance. It's just like probably most of us, like until you know Bitcoin, most of us are not very understanding of economics and finance. It's, it's, it's Bitcoin that starts pulling that thread of inflation, how much you're losing in reality and things like this. So that, that only came later. I was just wasting all my salary in nonsense. Well, maybe, yeah, well, I've always been quite measured. I, I buy a lot of tech and I still did back then, tech that fe- gets me to learn my craft further, right? But um, yeah, uh, eventually, eventually I capitulated. <laughs> I capitulated and I had to come back to Portugal for two years. I had to tap out. You have to put your ego aside. Um, you're going to be surrounded by a bunch of uh, pricks like most of us are when we're young that are going to tell you that you failed and so you thought it was going to be easy, you know, this type of nonsense. You know who they are, you trim the fat and you try again, move to London again after two years and made it. Now it's, uh, this is the second run, which is like ten, uh, uh, eight years now. So yeah, you just try again. You just go for it again. That's my, that's my thing. Yeah, I was just curious, as, as an artist, um, have you ever had any of your clients to actually pay you in Bitcoin? Well, I probably, I probably shouldn't say this, but yeah, a breed love. <laughs> yeah. Tell us, tell us more. Tell us more. Tell us about that. It's, 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 it's an interesting like place where your work could cross over with Bitcoin, right? Like, so it's very interesting to hear about. So tell us about that project. Yeah, look, I, let, let, let me give credit where it's due. Like, you know, the whole DeFi nonsense and the whole uh, shitcoin movement and all these things. One thing's for sure, most of it is scams and nonsense, but those guys actually put a lot of effort into graphics. You see a lot of exploration in graphics in the DeFi nonsense world. Um, The websites have all these 3D animations on them and they create all these videos, but in Bitcoin, uh, in Bitcoin, I don't don't see none of that. So um, actually I see the opposite. I see everything is very, Flip partish. So I like I forgot his name, but there's a guy that created a little documentary that he released last month, uh, B- uh, the rise of Bitcoin and the Great Reset. Some little documentary like this on YouTube, and it's just the graphics are a little bit. The information is good, but the graphics are all very clip party. It's just like you know, people want to see Netflix vibe. <laughs> people got used to a standard, right? that they look at and, and it feels important. It feels high standard and gives them confidence on what they're watching. And if you see some clay part moving around, it puts a lot of people off. <laughs> so you, you get on a website, you see all these DeFi colors and 3D animations and stuff. It pulls you in. If you go on a website and it looks like some dark web nonsense, it's just, it's not going to cut it. So. You know, I texted the guy and I told him, look, next time you do a documentary, I don't want to see none of this clip art bullshit again. I want to, I'll help you out. We, we find a way, but no more clip art bullshit on Bitcoin. So, you know, I had a call with, uh, I had a chat with the, um, with the Bitcoin magazine and to try and help with some stuff as well. So it's just uh, trying to help who I can. This is not... Uh, I, I don't even charge my professional rates to, to, the, to these projects because um, this is something I enjoy it, and it's a side gig. I, I, it's something I do in overtime on my spare time. So it's it's more fun. I, I want to have fun with it. You already mentioned that um, you do not really you know dabble into shit coins, but are you not you know fascinated by NFTs and how you you can apply your um, your crafts in the into the you know apply to the nft space i did create nfts in the past <clears throat> when the thing came out when the thing came out i created um like uh well it's not that i really created i as an artist you're always you, or you should be creating personal projects all the time because the personal pro- nowadays my clients don't want to really see so much what i do professional 
professionally. They want to see the stuff I do when I'm on my own at home, creating my own stuff. Cause that's when I'm fully myself creating something without constraints and stuff from other, from clients and things. And um, yeah, I had created a few videos for myself and I was like, well, let me try and NFT the shit out of this. So I put it online and I was shocked. I was shocked that someone bought the fucking videos. It's like, you can't believe it until they actually sell one of those things. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, this is literally something I did for fun on my like spare time. And some dude comes around here and <laughs> buys me this thing. And I'm like, oh my God. But then, yeah, I got paid in that fucking shit coin. Yeah, and I, I, could, I couldn't do it more than three times, honestly. I've done it three times, and then I was like, no, I can't do it. I bought Bitcoin with it, and the amount of work interacting with the environment that I don't feel I belong in, uh, even though it's art, yes, but I don't, I don't feel I belong in the whole ecosystem of the ethereum thing it's not it doesn't mean anything to me so i eventually stopped doing it after like three little videos is it that you don't really see value in nft dude okay i can understand you personally not liking no no one to interact with no ethereum but do you actually see value you know in the nft ecosystem do you something do you think it's something that you know people should latch on to but it's not for you personally i think it's the second one it's not for me it might it's, it's obviously for a lot of people as we can see, it's like, uh, but it's not for me. I, it doesn't even, it doesn't even cross my mind to buy uh, a JPEG. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's crazy. I don't, uh, I, I don't know. Like, I, on top of this, look, you're missing out on something. Like, probably not you, but a lot of people are missing out on something. Like, I know what it takes to create something something with proof of work <laughs> okay <laughs> and the vast majority of of these nfts and stuff there is zero proof of work involved there is like it's all this but you know this, uh, what's this these guys uh, um, scarcity uh, scarce yeah right they, they create bitcoin art and sell it but like actual physical stuff they actually a, a brecky for a uh, brecky the guy from Swan goes on uh, and carves in marble, big like structures and eyes and things like this. Okay, I get it. That I get it. Uh, but like most of these JPEGs I see, I mean, I know how long it takes to create something. It's like a bunch of it. The vast majority of this is a, it's a slap comp in Photoshop and uh, you, you throw it in there and you hope for, <laughs> and you pray someone buys it. I can't understand it. It's fair. It's just, you know, I guess people are, are chasing some chasing profits, I guess. I mean, it's not, um, it's not why I'm in this. Um, I want to uh, dissolve the state. <laughs> so, and it's not NFTs that are going to take me there. So that's it. I, I get that. That makes sense. I suppose you're at the point in your <laughs> career, probably where you don't feel like you you have to sacrifice on your morals maybe or, or do things that you don't think are fully worth it uh, even if there's money involved right like so some people are making millions and millions and millions from nfts but yeah you, yeah if you haven't got the pressure like you know i suppose if you're sat there and you can't eat and you've got no and then someone's like look dude you make great art <laughs> then obviously you're gonna be like okay fuck it like i'll stick it on i'll stick it on you know open sea and hope for the best right that makes sense right if, um but, it, but if you're not in that situation as a human then uh, yeah, if your if your moral conviction is stronger, your moral conviction is stronger, right? Um, I suppose. Um, that's the way. Well, I see it. look, I mean, it's not. Well, that said, I think you, you're you're placing my my you're placing my location, my status in my career, in relation to my lack of excitement for NFTs. But uh, Bitcoin on its own changed the way I interact with my clients that I work with, and which clients I work with uh which clients i work with today so that's uh that's funny because big studios the real big ones i'm not gonna go into names because it gets funny but the big ones they approach you with the idea that um they pay less because they are the big studio right that's classic <laughs> uh and since i got into bitcoin that whole game has stopped i don't care if you're the big studio
it was one of the it was one of the teachings in Bitcoin is the value for my time. I don't care if it's a big studio. I'm I'm gonna tell you like a big studio contacted me like uh, two months ago. We had a call, and they told me what was the job. They told was this big brand that all of you know really well. Uh, <laughs> they have amusement parks and ships and things like this, uh, and <laughs> and they uh, they started luring me with a whole oh you know it's a four month contract and, you know the price can you make a price and i told them literally on a call that look this is literally not the same thing as buying goods from china okay i told them like that i couldn't give a shit if uh <laughs> if the client never comes back I, i'm happy with the clients i have i prefer smaller clients anyways they are more uh they are less ego driven. It's more it's more a cozy environment. They are more understanding of each uh, individual's needs. Uh, so I said it just like that. And in hindsight, I was like, oh, maybe I lost this client forever. But uh, but then I was like, well, fuck it. I got Bitcoin anyways. I can give a shit. So it's like it's it's it, right. It's <laughs> it's it's they they it's. When they tell you that they want you to lower the price to a ridiculous thing, and you know it comes from the fact that they are this big studio and everyone wants to bend over, uh, it, you see through the disrespect. And so I just uh, said it like that. But yeah, I, I don't regret it. It's, 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 it's actually very typical of me to come out like that. So I'm, it, it was good. It's interesting though that like you, you feel like Bitcoin's... Uh giving you that kind of perspective i mean a similar thing here that i noticed like once i got into crypto but then more into bitcoin because I, I got into old coins first and then once i got into bitcoin more so but just crypto in general i suppose still um i think a similar thing happened to me really and i, and I suppose i never would have actually attributed it to crypto before but maybe it's related to that because it's around that time that i started then valuing my enjoyment of life in general let alone like my work and like finding value in it right like oh am i doing right what am i doing right now okay uh, is that actually make is actually doing anything good for the earth or anyone else in this world or even me like am i happy doing it no right okay well then i'm going to do something else and i suppose um it's interesting to see that that happened for you around the time that you discovered bitcoin more so and i suppose similarly for me as well actually which i find like i sort of i, I never really thought about it that it that it kind of coincides with when i properly discovered Bitcoin, I actually started valuing myself more uh, and making sure that I was just doing the right thing for me. Um, so I don't, I wonder why exactly why that is. And maybe it's kind of like uh, people discovering religion or something in the uh, in the old days. <laughs> I don't know. Well, look, I don't even, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even try to avoid the whole religion thing. You know, like most of it, I, like I, I, I can't call myself a Bitcoin maximalist. I. Well, I can't, it's, I, I, it depends on the definition, but I can't, I'm not like Svetsky. Okay. So it's, it's not, so there's, <laughs> I can't have that dialogue. There's always more things on the table. Matter of fact, I don't hold just Bitcoin as part of my portfolio. Well, I don't hold much more. I hold uh, Bitcoin, a little bit of gold in Tesla because I, I invested early in Tesla. So I'm not going to let go of that one. Um, but so, um, but yeah, Bitcoin did, did, uh, did put a twist on not only my circle, my the way I interact with my clients, which clients, my appreciation for time. Um, I, I think I've been always very spontaneous and very, um, I'm the guy that wakes up at 6 a.m. on the weekend. I, uh, I go to bed at 9.30, usually, latest 10 p.m. So I'm always like very uh, upbeat. I, Every time I wake up, I'm one of those guys like, oh, I can't believe I get to see all this shit again. It's like, what? <laughs> I love this. Let's go. So yeah, in, in Bitcoin, kind of put, a, put another gear onto that, right? Uh, Tiago, one who wants to see the state become dissolved uh, via Bitcoin, what are your thoughts on this guy in El Salvador, uh, Bukele, the president, who has made the legal tender law? Well, that, this is not like a, a rule, but a, a percentage of people that get into Bitcoin start falling into the libertarianism rabbit hole, right? It's kind of uh, two things that go somewhat hand in hand. And then 
you start seeing yourself going into the anarcho-capitalism rabbit hole and you start questioning all these things. I fell for that one too. I'm falling uh, constantly <laughs> in that one. It's a... Uh, it's 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 mixed feelings isn't it like you want to see bitcoin succeed you want to see people using bitcoin like you know exactly where i'm going with the answer because you're a bitcoiner probably so you kind of see through the bullshit but it's like i want to see people adopt it i want to see people use it um but not when the state tells you to um it's when the people chose it over the currency right so it's it's tricky. I it's it's very. I had this conversation so many times. It's very it's very con it's it's very contradictory inside because you know like if Bukele wasn't to give Bitcoin as, as legal tender, fuck knows how long. <laughs> you know, fuck knows how many years he actually bridged uh, <laughs> that of natural uh, adoption. Would natural adoption be the thing? Yeah, yeah, of course it would be the thing, but. Um, yeah, look, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is tax free where I come from and I'm not there. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny situation. I think, I, I think, I think obviously I, I'm, so, I'm so happy for Bitcoin uh, uh, being a legal tender in El Salvador. I'm probably happier for that happening than I am sad for not having been the people choosing it. Right. And, you know, like, Eventually, you see, eventually, th this creeps into uh, Bitcoiners' minds that, oh, it wasn't the people choosing. But sooner rather than later, you're cheering with the guy. <laughs> you're cheering every time he puts a picture of the McDonald's cap and this and that, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's fucking crazy that he joined the whole <laughs> Bitcoin meme stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's mixed feelings. I want to, I I'm all about choice and it's, it's a, it's a funny position, but look, they, they have that system where you can actually take USD and not take Bitcoin. I think that was actually a, it feels like to me like a, a somewhat, a, somewhat of a, a safety net of fairness in case you don't want to opt in, right? It's okay, you don't want to opt in, you get BTC, but you continue to use your USD if you want. Um, it still gives people some margin for some some na some natural adoption right eventually people that keep getting paid in usd if they decide they will roll over to bitcoin eventually especially if we know if we go parabolic i guess so yeah i have mixed feelings but i, I guess i'm happy i'm happy to see uh people like jack mahler's going out there and doing this stuff it's super inspiring it's just super inspiring to see a guy like that just doing work <laughs> So, something that also like because you mentioned that people can accept bitcoin but then have it um convert into dollars immediately on chivo and things like that but also uh within the law there's that thing that um you know basically if, if you don't have you know the ability to accept bitcoin you don't have to kind of things so it's like an out for like smaller businesses and local people who either really really don't want to accept it or can't which i think is a good thing because as you said it provides some more fairness and some more choice to people um but i think the thing is like when I was in El Salvador, like a big part of, um, if, if it's, if there's something weird about it because it's like, okay, I'm in Bitcoin and even just crypto in general, to be honest, uh, being involved in cryptocurrency as a thing has been sort of shunned or dissuaded or sort of, you know, you've always felt like a bit of a weirdo or a degenerate or whatever, right. For being involved in this. Uh, and people are always like, Oh, he's the crypto one or the Bitcoin guy. <laughs> um, it's just like a classic <laughs> thing, you know? <laughs> um, um, but then like when you're there and as you said, with Naib Bukele, uh, like understanding and getting involved in the memes, like when you're there, you kind of think like, it's this weird feeling like, wow, I feel accepted for the first time ever for actually being into this strange internet currency that you know like everyone thinks i'm an absolute nutcase for, for being into so it's kind of this odd thing where it's like finally people who are kind of anti-norm for the first time it seems like actually except somewhere is like yeah come on in and you're like whoa okay like you know and people i'm sure lots of people in el salvador aren't super happy to to have you know lots of random gringos walking around but like 
a lot of people, like even just random people in the street, were like, uh, "There's like some guys driving past in their cars or whatever, and they're like Hong Kong, like Bitcoin." And I'm like, "Oh, cool, okay." Like just in the city, you know, like random guys, who, you know. Um, so it's quite like, uh, you know, there does feel like some kind of acceptance, which is kind of nice. Um, is, is what were I'm you that because you were down there, right? Yeah, yeah. So I went over there in uh, when was it? I think early, really early November, from memory. I could be completely wrong here. It might be, might I think be it was uh, the middle of November. Was it middle of November? Yeah, so went over there um, around the um, Adopting Bitcoin Lightning Summit, and uh, they also had another Bitcoin event there. I can't remember, but um, La Bitcoin, more, yeah, La Bitcoin, which was more crypto oriented, but the Lightning Summit was just straight up Bitcoin. Um, and so yeah, went to Bitcoin Beach before the like official Lightning Summit went there, um, and saw that, and, and met Jorge and um, uh, Roman. Um, so it was pretty cool to to go there, and it's really kind of. I, I'd encourage anyone who feels uh, safe to and wants to, to, he to head over. And as long as they, you know, um, they, they feel like they know enough about the country to, to go over there and do things right and meet people and see the area. Um, uh, bro, I'd like to go with me, it's not so much about, I'm just waiting for the whole circus 19 to take a break. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, when that takes yeah. a break, I, I, I'm, I mean, I'll take the girls down there for sure. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. really looking forward. Like, you know, I think the, uh, Bukele ha uh, has an announcement to make like on uh, on Bitcoin conference. Like, I can't imagine what, what's going to come out of that. Further announcement, yeah. Yeah. Know, with this thing with the IMF, I kind of feel like he's the underdog that's like taking on, you know, like the structure of power. So I'm rooting for him. I'm, I, I really don't know too much about El Salvador's politics and politics to me are kind of just corrupt in general. So I don't you know, really put my faith in a leader like that, but he does feel like the underdog and I am rooting for him to be successful. Now I'm just putting out here right now that he didn't, he did not commit suicide. No. If you try to fuck with the IMF <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> <laughs> so he it definitely it's like the john mcafee situation he didn't you know yeah he definitely he didn't ice himself like just put it down there he didn't ice himself you know because shit, shit's about to get weird we're, we're you know, saying it already with the imf yeah just put it out there <laughs> it sounds great like when he says like okay with with three btc you you get permanent residency i i think there's a good chance in the future that's going to become even easier. Because, you know, for some of us, 3BTC might sound like a little. Obviously, for the majority of the planet, it's actually a lot. <laughs> I, think, I think that bar is going to be lowered sooner rather than later. <clears throat> well, uh, would that's you, my bite. Would you see you, uh, and I know this is a pretty tough question, um, but would you ever see yourself, like, if, it, if this whole Bitcoin volcano city actually ever happens which is a, a pretty tough i mean it's a tough ask um although it's probably more realistic than what was it crypto island or something i saw like this horrible i don't know if you guys have seen this but this is like hilarious <laughs> oh my god like comedic uh oh with like connie the coin and like this creepy stuff going on um but anyway uh besides that if, if they actually managed to make it take off and happen like would you see yourself uh considering ever going there like uh, to join 100 fucking people? percent yeah. yeah, I was just, yeah, I was literally talking with my wife. We, we were like, yeah, look, like I, <laughs> she was raised in Sweden, uh, sorry, in Switzerland. She, she'd been to Portugal. Now she's in London. I've been uh, in Portugal, been to London, been to Portugal again. And we were just discussing like, it's, it literally doesn't feel like this is where it's, it ends. Well, obviously you don't know if it's El Salvador. It's, it feels like a, a long shot like what we, we <laughs> like i always thought like this is not the end of our movement but el salvador <laughs> like but you know like <laughs> you start you start building these ideas in in your mind which is really how how i work i build an idea and it's just depending on who you are it only takes a certain percentage of the idea for it to become something that you need to do and I act really early when it comes to this stuff. Like, but it's such a crazy idea. Like, I look at that little three D mock up they made. They made of the city, and I'm like, "What the fuck, bro?" <laughs> it's like, I can't imagine this like circle thing full of bitcoiners in there and shit. It's so crazy. Zero taxes and shit. What? Oh, 
It does sound good, man. And I, and I think like it's 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 only human nature to want to be somewhere. A where you feel like you actually belong is first off. Like people don't want to be somewhere they don't belong, right? Like that's why when you see at school, there's always the few kids who just feel like they don't belong there and they end up unhappy and blah blah blah. Um, and obviously, and secondly as well, like again, it's human nature that okay, if for example, I mean, your work's mainly online based or pretty much wholly online based. Um, so like if you if you if you're someone who can do that why wouldn't you go live somewhere where you're not going to get taxed and you earn in like a sort of, uh, you're not going to earn like a what a local El Salvadorian would earn, um, which is a sad thing, but is, is the honest truth. Uh, why would you not go somewhere where your money will go further? You're not going to get taxed. You feel like you belong. It just kind of seems like a common sense move if it ever actually happens. Um, Cause I think a lot of people. Yeah, I guess. That. Yeah. Usually the, the anchor to that is family ties, isn't it? Like both me and my wife, we have like uh parents in Portugal that are getting older and the idea that you're going to be like, fuck knows how many hours El Salvador is from Portugal and you're not like proactive in their life in case they need. That's, that's a, yeah, that's a crazy, yeah, that's a weird anchor to, to have. Also, my daughter, she's two and a half years old. Uh, th there's a point where you have to make the move or then it's too late. And, or you, you got to wait for her to grow to make it after because so, you don't want to disrupt her life too much at the beginning. So, yeah, it's the, the family ties is usually what uh, what makes everything a little funny. But yeah, look, uh, first, let's see if they can make even one building from that city. One building. If they make one building, I, my hopes, <laughs> my hopes uh, go up. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, like, what what? project in bitcoin is like the most exciting for you right now that's a funny one i wouldn't be able to tell actually i'm more driven by the people than the projects themselves it's really the people that drive me even like look throughout the years i've reached out to all these bitcoiners that uh could have just my message my message probably went to the spam box not even the main inbox on twitter and they've always replied to me and put their time to help me. Like, uh, Gigi, when I, when I opened my, when I got my note for the first time, there was no umbral. <laughs> umbral is like a, 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 an iOS on, on the node. But when I got my node, it was like all this DOS type operating system. And I fucked, I fucked it up at some point and I wrote Gigi. I'm like, well, I just read 21 lessons. I'm pretty sure Gigi knows how to help me with this shit, even though he doesn't know me. I wrote him. He helped me out with that stuff. Uh, other people like uh, Gre uh, Foss, Greg Foss helped me with some insights personally. Uh, Nick Carter, I reached out. He's, he pointed me in the right direction when I had some questions. Obviously, Breedlove, when I reached out to Breedlove, he was like, well, let's, let's do this video. Uh, Mac, uh, Max Hillebrand opened my mind to some stuff as well. We, we talk a little bit about libertarianism and things like this. So it's just the idea that I reach out to these guys that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no one they know. I don't even have my real picture on Twitter. I have my, when I'm young, when I'm a, like a 16 year old or something and they, they're open to help me out and discuss these things that's it's bitcoiners that, that really i'm bullish on bitcoiners that's the quote right <laughs> that's the thing <laughs> tiago um that's something that's got me you know curious it's your tattoos you they give you a rather menacing look if you look you really uh is there is there is there, is there, is there a story behind the tattoos or it's just your express your love for art you know being expressed in, you know on your body I would say for the most part, mo most people go f from a aesthetic point of view, but yeah, I guess mine has have a lot of a, a uh, <laughs> aggressive and at times probably controversial connotations uh, with religion. Uh, religion, uh, it's it's got parts that uh, are connected to the stage where my mom being in jail and things like this so yeah uh yeah remember when my mom went to jail that's when i started doing tattoos because now there is nobody to tell me i can't do that <laughs> right so like uh, as soon as she goes let's uh, go i started 
I started getting inked like crazy. Obviously, nowadays I'm sick of it. I I, I literally I literally can't stand even the idea of uh, going and doing one right now. But yeah, it, it's all connected to all my twists and <laughs> and my perspectives. Uh, yeah, so, so, some of them like when. That's why I'm really mindful of people asking specific meanings for tattoos. Like, because for most people, when you go and you ask them about what, why did they have this tattooed? Chances are, it, if it doesn't have a date of when someone was born or died, it's okay to ask, right? <laughs> so, right? But in my case, most of them are, are, are actually connected to stuff that if then you start explaining, people go, oh, actually, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, it's okay. It's, it's, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it get, it yeah. gets really awkward quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, like it, it, the tattoos, they, as you get comfortable with your career, you just do more because it's like, um, I, I, at the beginning, I didn't have like face tattoos or stuff like this at the very beginning. I wait it's 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 just like bitcoin like right? your money starts piling into bitcoin as your knowledge you know that chart <laughs> as your knowledge grows your money just starts flowing into bitcoin it's the same with tattoos as your like profession gets more solid your clients you are your clients you enjoy them they enjoy you they know who you are uh you just start you just you just continue to to just uh, get more ink and stuff i'm but i'm just sick of it. it the pain and all that nonsense i'm i'm really quiet these days compared to when i was uh, back then uh like uh, i don't know if you know like dao uh dao got dao philosophy daoism got into my life like a few uh, like some two years ago through a friend and uh that that uh tamed tamed uh, my rougher side from back in the days a lot like I, I'm very different since, um, yeah. The tattoos do look cool though. I like them. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's like Darwin created a Tiago 2.0. And I suppose also having like children often causes people to kind of, um, like it silences that kind of like rougher, edgier side of themselves. And they start thinking, Hey, yeah. you know, it's not just me, right. It's my, like my kids and, uh, and there's more to live for, I guess, and more to worry about, I suppose too. Um, so oh yeah. You things. said it. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you, you did get it right. It's like even Bitcoin, like I, I started stacking Bitcoin to get rich. That's right. You know, oh, some guy tells you I, I bought Bitcoin. I made this much. And you're like, oh, where I'm going to buy Coinbase, three, three percent fees. Boom. <laughs> and you just go like that. Uh, and then you get into Bitcoin. And eventually these days, I mean, obviously, at this point, I've seen the, my net worth uh, crush as, as much as your net worth probably crashed like twice in the past few, few years and uh, it's nothing it means nothing uh, it means means nothing because eventually the the goal of bitcoin and the humanitarian side of it and um, all these people like alex gladstein and stuff they get they open the doors of your idea of bitcoin into other directions uh, other than the getting rich and stuff Eventually, my Bitcoin, I already feel like it's more projected to, to my daughter in the future than to myself, honestly. So it's like, uh, yeah, I think it's everyone's sort of tra trajectory kind of. Um, yeah, I think as things unfold, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's natural. <clears throat> Yeah, it, make, it definitely yeah, it makes sense from like a evolutionary standpoint, right? Like you, you want like if you're having a child, like it makes sense that you'd want, you know, like a, even just like a human race, we'd want the child to grow up and survive and be okay and make it. And so it makes sense from like an evolutionary standpoint. I suppose like um, switching topic a little bit because I'm wary of time and I wanted to ask you something um, uh, specifically, which was like um, especially towards the end of the podcast as well with people watching or listening. Uh, what are like some uh, some projects that you've worked on that you're like really proud of or that you really enjoyed because it, obviously this way people can go and see some of what you've done, right? Like, uh, that, that would make sense. Uh, well, it's like pretty much 
it's an artist thing that you, you never fully like what you've done. <laughs> it's like uh, a tortured artist sort of a thing, you know. Like, <laughs> never quite, quite going to make it. You, know? you you never bought enough Bitcoin at the bottom. <laughs> it's it's the same. It's like you can't. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, it seems to be always the latest the latest thing you've done seems to be the, I think definitely the thing I've enjoyed doing the most in the past few years and looking at the most in the past few years, it's definitely a swan song for sure. It's probably the, uh, the move, the Apple or original on uh, Apple TV. First of all, I don't work for film often. So that was an opportunity to work for film, which was one of my uh, mom's dream was that one day I would work for a film. So honestly, when I got into the project, I'm not one to take seven month type duration projects. I don't, it didn't, it wasn't my style up until that project. But when I knew it was for film and when I knew, oh, okay, this is definitely going to make my mom's, uh, <laughs> one of my mom's dreams come true. And it's, it's easy for me. I just got to do this for seven months. <laughs> And it's something I enjoy doing. So, and, and my team was also really nice. Uh, so I jumped in and the movie that, you know, the style of movie and everything else, it, it's very down my alley. So it was really good. It was seven months. And then at the end, I told my mom, Hey, here, uh, it's done. I, I worked for film and she goes and tells her friends and checks the credits and all that nonsense. I'm not like <laughs> the medals. The medals part is a bit nonsense to me. It's like, I don't, like the credits at the beginning, it, it's just like Bitcoin. At the beginning, it was about the credits in my career. It's the credits in my name and this thing on my portfolio and my name at the end of the film, this and that, but it doesn't, it's just, it doesn't matter for shit, the name at the end of the film. Um, it's more just having a good time with good professionals and creating something cool. But um, yeah, it, yeah, Swan Song, uh, Apple TV. That's my favorite thing. Um, I have another documentary coming out on uh, Netflix in March, I think. Uh, the narrative, I hate it. It's about this dystopian, uh, somewhat like uh, fucked up Klaus Schwab type shit where uh, futuristic nonsense where people are well I can't even give you spoilers because I, I actually think I can't so <laughs> but yeah it's it's Klaus Schwabish okay so <laughs> so uh, it's uh, 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 that's not my favorite thing I have done especially the narrative involved but it was uh, it was a great time with another group of friends the same partially the same people i've i've worked with on the movie so yeah i work with those guys a lot territory studio i mean the just watching the trailer for um swan song i know you're not involved in like the you know the actual like direction of it or whatever directing and all that stuff but um just watching the trailer gets you pretty excited like it looks like a cool project to be involved in from the aspect of like what's been created as a whole uh, and I haven't seen, I haven't seen it actually, um, but the trailer got me pretty pumped and I uh, sent it to my family and stuff. So it was definitely something that I'm interested in, uh, in checking out. Um, and now I think about it, I've got a movie night on Friday, so I might, might watch it. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so that, that's, uh, that's persuaded me, but, um, and, I, and I, I'd highly encourage anyone to go and check it out as well. It looks like a, a good um, piece of art and, and, and piece of like commentary as well on, on kind of part like a sort of strange and scary topic. Um, so it's quite interesting to, to me. Yeah, it's done. It's, it's done that. It's, it's done that style of um, what was the other movie that, where the guy has multiple robotic uh, female girlfriends type yeah. thing. Remember oh, that? Trying... Yeah. yeah. I'm it's... trying to think the one where, and then he like falls in love with her and she persuades her to let him out. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah I'm trying to think it's really yeah. annoying. I can't remember what that is that film. But it's like, well, that, funny, it, fu yeah. Funny enough. I like I've done the, I've done the film and I do the Netflix thing. I, and tons of advertising, but I actually rarely, rarely watch a movie and i rarely watch tv i watched my movie because it's my movie but i don't i'm not one to spend time on the tv um and people find that weird once again that <laughs> like that you, you create 
a certain art that you don't look back at. I just do it and I move on to the next one. I don't stop to look at uh, that. I don't know. I don't know if an actor is constantly in the theater watching other people act type type shit. You know. <laughs> so yeah, I don't. Sick of it, man. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I I create my graphics. I move on to the next one. I don't really know where they go, where they sit. Uh, what? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, that's another that's another thing but that's but that's actually common i have a friend of mine he creates uh, lots of characters for marvel movies he says he doesn't watch his movies right well this may be an element of like uh, and this is the thing as well like uh, as you said you, you tried to cyber and you're into bitcoin you're into, there's maybe an element of ego death in there too right like you don't really need to <laughs> like love yourself for like, you know what i mean like just sit there going sort of you know jacking off over yourself in a way of like oh look how amazing i am you know maybe there's just an element of that too right like uh, that's in there <laughs> which makes sense but, uh, and i'm gonna say this as well this is legit um so i know you said you did some uh, uh, well i think you did some work on one of the need for speed games i think could be wrong on that one but yeah yeah, did, yeah 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 and I, I think as well was it the day and night animations yeah 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 literally as well this is the best bit is i remember when that game i played it at my friend's house whenever the hell that game came out and i remember me and him going on and on about the day and night animations and like oh it's so cool that you go from day to night and that looks so badass and i couldn't believe it and i saw it as you i was like what like, i never i've never had that experience before so like, i'm not meaning to like give you a crazy compliment and i didn't like, play legit. the game no, really? All right, okay, yeah. But it legit does look badass. Like, I remember me and my friends exactly saying, like, oh, those animations are so cool. Where it goes from, like, switches. Yeah, so, that um, client was... Yeah, that client was... Uh, a bit clueless, honestly. Difficult. A bit clueless. D difficult. Yeah, that, that's the word. Difficult. <laughs> yeah. That's a diplomatic I way. I gotta put my go. best accent on. Difficult. <laughs> difficult. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> No, okay. I, I, I say, it's, it's, it, well, I say, people can definitely check out. Um, and have you, you've got um, a website, haven't you? I think I, I, I swear I checked it out. You might, you might. Yeah, might my name that. Tiago Higgs dot com. That's, yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll link that. For sure, yeah, and your Twitter. That's where all my stuff like goes. So everyone can check you out there. I mean, there's no last questions, uh, guys. Is there before? Because I say I'm just wary of time. Ricardo, Jerry, we were good. Uh, we I have one last question, and, yeah, and you can it. answer it as briefly as you want. In your industry. How like are your coworkers like the people you work with? Are they conscious of Bitcoin or are they kind of uh, think it's still kind of a fringe investment? Uh, no, they are. Um, in the creative industry, it's normal that I'm in a job um, with other guys, and somehow economics or finance or even inflation serves as the uh, the pull for the rest of. The conversation to unfold and eventually bitcoin comes into the conversation but most of them are, are uh, knee deep shit coins as well uh and obviously i come across as the idiot that oh you're gonna miss out on all these gains because uh because <laughs> you're because you're a bitcoin freak and you only have bitcoin this and that but but all of them but the, but the discourse but the discourse they they give is usually around the i'm gonna make so much money right it's completely different I understand. I understand what they are trying to achieve. They are trying to get tons of fiat, but uh, it's not so much what I am trying to get. Um, I want. Um, I want to see Bitcoin succeed first and foremost. I'm bullish on Bitcoiners. I want to see these countries adopt Bitcoin. And one day, eventually, if something, I want to borrow against my Bitcoin. But the idea of selling my Bitcoin is uh, kind of a scary. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. It's, it's kind of weird. the idea of selling your Bitcoin is weird. I can't. It's it's just it, it's funny. It, it became it became really a resistance. Just the idea of departing from it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I remember when I first. Um... But I spent it rather than sold it, right? There is a there is a bit of difference, but like it's still the same thing to a degree. But yeah, I remember spending uh, I think like a, a whole Bitcoin. Very strange, very, <laughs> very, very strange feeling. <laughs> on, le on legal shaky, fees, shaky and, voice over there. Yeah, because uh, uh, it was when it was like you know seven grand USD or something stupid. Um, but it, but it made yeah. so much sense practically to do it at that time. It was like, yeah, yeah, this is what I have. I'm in another country. I'm gonna get a discount for doing this. this. It made so much sense. It was like, and it did, that was actually a big realization for me of like, yeah, this is actually like sensible, like makes sense money, right? Like it's global. I don't have to piss about like 
my pounds to Brazilian reals, all this crap. I don't have to do all the IOF taxes, blah, 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 blah. I just literally go boom, boom. And within 10 minutes, essentially done. I get a discount from the guy accepting it because he doesn't have to accept the stupid credit card fees either and all that stuff. Everyone's happy. And so it made me realize like, shit, you know, this is uh, the circular economy is a big thing, you know, and I'd already, I'd already discovered a bit refill, but it made me definitely much more aware of like, yeah, spend it, don't set it kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's yeah, you guys have a better. crazy, like, uh, you guys came up with this thing. It's pretty crazy. Like when I found out about it, I was super excited. I've bought a few books. I've, I've bought, I thought like, I can't, I'm like, I'm resistant. I'm resistant to buy shit. I, I literally don't need using bit refill in my, in my Bitcoin, but the idea of buying Bitcoin related books <laughs> using Bitcoin. Bitcoin somehow feels like, Oh, this makes sense. Cause it's, it's, circular right it's like it's so weird yeah it's like investing back in itself <laughs> yeah yeah well it's like if you value the currency a lot more which i do and i know you do um then you're less inclined to buy random crap and you're much more inclined to only spend when it makes sense on good stuff good quality blah blah, blah. so uh yeah it's uh it makes a difference i think um and that kind of gets rid of the whole myth that like if we went to bitcoin which is actually technically inflationary for the next god knows how many thousand years but is somewhat deflationary uh, design, I guess. Uh, then people are always upset, like, oh, people aren't going to spend, the economy's going to die. And it's like, well, no, people will just spend when it makes sense to spend. They're not going to spend irrationally because of interest rate uh, manipulation and, and things like that. Well, um, didn't didn't uh, didn't our friend Jerome just literally come out before this call uh, uh, saying that the printer is going to keep on, <laughs> it's going to keep on printing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, the prince is going to keep going, going again. just for now anyway. Interest rates are staying so stable, cool. uh, so which is crazy. unbelievable. Because we all know, uh, and they've given up on the transitory thing, haven't they, on inflation? But, um, oh, yeah, I, I want to give you props. Before I forget, I want to give you props. Uh, last time we spoke, mm. you told me like you were fully confident and open to the idea that it would be completely normal if Bitcoin was to crash even deep into the 20s. That was right? Uh, I just close. I say, yeah, close. Not too and, bad, and not too far off. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope, I hope you actually bought the dip you were so hopeful of. But yeah, uh, uh, it it might actually tumble some more just to give us some opportunity. Yeah. Um, who knows? I I, I, I don't know if I trust chain uh, chain analysis anymore. It's like, oh, it's gonna pump. Uh, uh, liquidations, this and that is going to pump up and then it goes down. It's like, uh, uh, whatever. I just wait, I just wait for the dips and that's it. And I DCA, I do the combo DCA plus dip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a nice little DCA and then occasionally buff, like you know, buy like a, <laughs> yeah, when it, when, it, when it looks uh, entertaining, go shopping kind of thing. Yeah, no, okay, well, yeah, no, that's fair, fair enough. It's, it's something I've, yeah, I'd seen coming for a while and it could definitely go, you know, uh, go live, but we'll see. Hey, you know, no one's got a crystal ball, uh, <laughs> nice financial advice. <laughs> No, exactly. Yeah, no, no financial advice on this podcast. Just complete uh, shit talking, and well, from us, and then from our, from our lovely guest. Always uh, good information. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess uh, we we should wrap it up because I know it's getting late. Um, as much as I want to continue talking, to be honest. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, we'll let you get to bed and uh, get up early for the next day. But um, thanks for coming on, Tiago. It's been awesome, and um, it'd be good to have you back in the, in the future, uh, especially after you've done some more projects and see maybe how you're your journey's going um and i'll be talking to you anyway outside of this um but yeah thanks for thanks for thanks for coming on and we'll have your links in the in the bottom of the podcast and thank you ricardo and jerry for joining me as always um but for now that's been it and uh, everyone listening have an amazing day week month year uh love mm -hmm. your life and uh, keep buying bitcoin <laughs>